Today I'm going to be attempting to make a hand vise out of a high carbon railroad spike. Now this is probably the fifth railroad spike project I've done and I'm going to be using the induction forge to heat the metal so that I can bang it into the new shape that I want it to be. Now the high carbon railroad spike is a cool shape. I, I like doing projects out of it because it is a finite amount of material and it's a really good challenge for me to try to make unique things out of such an ordinary looking shape. So I start by breaking down sort of the head of the spike and making it flat and square and kind of consolidating all that material. Then I go over to the point and I make that flat and square as well, essentially turning this into a square bar of steel. Now the goal here is going to be to actually punch a hole in the center of this and turn it into basically two legs of a vise. And the way I'm going to do that is by what's called upsetting the center of the bar. So you can see the center of the bar is actually getting a little bit fatter from the concentrated heat in the center and the hammer blows to the top and bottom. So I'm just trying to fatten up that material so that I have just a little more meat so that when I punch the hole, there's more material around it in order for the legs to be nice and strong. Now I modeled the shape of this little vise off of another YouTube video I saw that I'll put a link down below of a guy making a jeweler's vise out of just a larger piece of material, but what I'm gonna build is kind of a similar shape. Now punching a small hole in a larger piece of material like this is a little challenging for me. I'm not really sure if I'm kind of doing it right. I keep ruining my punches because I think my material might be too hot. But either way, by punching from both sides, you can see I'm able to get a hole through this material and then I can sort of stretch it out by getting the material nice and hot and driving sequentially larger punches through it. Now you can see why it was important for me to fatten up that center of the material. The next process is gonna to be to kind of draw out the material to either side of that punched hole. And to do that, I'm using the horn of my anvil and the round side of a rounding hammer. I just recently got some new hammers from my friend Chris Cash at Mount Phillip Metalworks. They're really beautiful and they've been great to use, so go check out his page. I'll link that down below as well. I'm gonna be using my guillotine tool here to isolate some parts of this to make basically the jaws of the vise. Now the guillotine tool is something that my friend Cliff Dufton designed, uh, or this version of it he designed. They've been around for a long time. And I made mine based on his design and it's been really great. You can see how it's a really controlled way to isolate parts of your forging uh, by using, in this case, these half round dies that are on one inch bar stock. But it's a really, really controlled way to get basically identical and mirrored forgings because you have those top and bottom tools basically identical. And it's, for me, it saves me so much time because I'm not so great with my hammer strikes. Now, all of this is an effort to make sort of the jaws of the vise. And I basically want this to look like just a little post vise, a little blacksmithing vise but obviously at a much smaller scale. So I'm trying to be very deliberate with my hammer strikes with the peen side of this hammer and then going back over to the guillotine tool and using it almost as like a clamp to flatten out the front of the jaws and kind of hold it in place and kind of shape everything. You can sort of see the shape I'm going for coming together as I bounce between the face of the anvil and the guillotine tool jaws. As the piece cools down, I can make kind of a little bit more subtle changes to it. And then once I feel like it's all shaped the way I want, I'm able to sort of chamfer the edges by gently tapping the guillotine tool as I round it over. Now that I've got that shape developed on the end, I can draw out what is going to be the legs of the vise over on the horn of the anvil. This is a new to me 550 pound double horn German anvil. And this is the first project that I got to do on it. And I got to say, I really, really like it. You can see the way that material is sort of stretching and forming into shape by banging it over the horn using the round face of this hammer. Once I feel like the jaw section is complete, I stretch out the rear section, which will essentially be the handle a little bit more as well. And then I want to go ahead and sort of round out the bottom. And I could go and do this on the grinder, but I would prefer to do it in a forged state. So I go and grab this little swage block I have that has these little cupping tools. And I sort of hit the head of it while I move it around in sort inside that little cup. And that's going to get me like kind of a rounded bottom, which I think will look nice. The next, next task here is going to be to actually slit the legs down the middle. And I'm going to be using a very thin 030 cutoff wheel. That's 0.03 inches thick. 
And using a very thin cutting wheel like this can be a little tricky. Uh, they have a lot of flex to them, uh, but these fared thin cutting wheels I found to be really, really good. They're very strong and they don't shatter the way uh, cheaper cutting wheels I've used in the past have. So I'm really trying to take my time here and just very delicately slice this down the middle. Um, I'm really gonna go nice and slow and easy. I don't wanna cut into that drifted hole that I did sort of in the center. And I wanna make sure this is nice and symmetrical as best I can. So I'm pecking at it and really going slow to cut through this relatively thick material. Uh, and I'm also having a hard time holding it because it's a very irregular shape. The other thing here is I really want these cuts to line up, but I don't want to cut straight through from one side because that gives me the opportunity for the whole cut to be angled. So I found with this kind of operation, it's best to start the cut from both sides and let them meet in the middle. This way you're guaranteed that the cut on either side is going to be perfect. Once I got through it with the cutoff wheel, a simple hacksaw blade will get in there and cut the little bit that's left. It was a little tricky to get this cut to start because there was kind of some jagged little pieces and a little, like a little sliver in there. But once I got the blade moving, it was pretty easy to continue that cut and get down to the bottom of the drifted hole. Now to open that up, I just heat up the center of the piece and drive my drift in there. And you can see how nice and evenly it opens up those two legs of the vise. Now here I've got an adjustable jaw vise that I'm gonna be holding the piece in so that I can file away some of those cutoff wheel marks on the inside of the jaws of the vise. What's nice about a swivel jaw vise like this is it'll easily grab a piece of material that's on irregular. Uh, you can see there's that hole in sort of the back of the rear jaw and the whole thing pivoted to grab this thing really well. I'm just using a smaller file to clean things up and kind of give a little bit of a chamfer to the edges. You can see the vise taking shape. Next thing I want to do is kind of close up the jaws because I want them to sort of have an open section in the middle and then the jaws will close at the very end. So I put a little piece of bar stock in there. This is eighth inch thick bar stock. Sort of hammer the legs of the vise around it. Now that they're parallel, I can sort of get everything nice and flat and then I'll heat up just the jaws and pinch those closed. What this will allow me to do is have a little bit of room for adjustment and also make sure that the jaws close nice and tight when the thing is completely shut. Next step is to drill a hole for the kind of vise screw. So this is another operation that I wanna do from both sides because I don't want the opportunity for the drill to kind of go crooked. And I'm using some new drills from my friends over at Ferret Abrasive. Uh, these are not released yet, but they are really, really good and I'm excited to share them in a couple of weeks when they officially come out. So I'm drilling an undersized hole in both sides and then I'm gonna go ahead and chase out one side to a larger hole so that I can actually peen in a little lead screw to kind of close this vise up. I'm gonna be using a quarter 20 sized screw that I'm gonna just cut threads on out of a piece of bar stock. So you can see chasing open one of the sides and this is just gonna allow me to have nice clearance so that I can put the screw through there. In order for the screw I'm putting in to clamp down nicely, I wanna square up the hole in the one side of the vise. So I do that with a little carbide burr and then I take a piece of quarter inch bar stock and a file and I start filing down the end to make a little stud that I can hammer in. Now I'm going for a slight taper and a square profile so that it doesn't have the opportunity to spin even after I peen it in, uh, this thing's gonna be in there for good. So just a couple strokes with the file and adjusting and tuning as I go through to try to get it into that square hole on the back side of the vise. A little more tuning will allow this to be a nice friction fit even before I heat it up and peen it over. Now I actually had tried this previously by making the screw completely but I realized that in order to actually peen it over, I needed to do the threading afterwards. So I'm just heating up the end, getting it nice and red hot, and then slipping the body of the vise on it so that I can peen over the edge. I'm just heating this with a map gas torch and just peening it over kind of nice and gently, but you can see it gets a nice domed profile. 
heating it and then hitting it with the ball peen hammer to lock this piece in for good. With that done, I can cut off the quarter inch piece of bar and then I can just grab a quarter 20 die and cut some threads on this while it's clamped in the vise. Like I said, I tried to do this by making the screw, but I found that I damaged the threads too much when I was trying to peen over the end. So I just thought it'd be easier to cut the threads while it was actually on there. And this way I would guarantee that the threads were really clean and I wouldn't have any opportunity to damage them by having to clamp them or do anything else. It's pretty easy to cut threads in regular bar like this. You just gotta take your time, kind of break the chip as you go. And then you wind up with some really clean threads that are very, very usable. The next task was to actually make the thumb screw that's going to close this vise. And I wanted to forge this from scratch. I just thought using an off the shelf thing just wouldn't look right. So I grabbed the guillotine tool again and my rounding dies to sort of create this butterfly looking shape with a series of rounded sections that I could then drill and tap. I'm actually using one of the dies from the guillotine tool in my vise to get things nice and flat. And then I can drill a number seven pilot hole and run a quarter 20 tap through this, which is gonna give me the threads I need to close this vise up. Now again, you can easily cut threads by hand like this. I have lots of tools to cut threads, but I felt like this project needed to all be done by hand to kind of go with the aesthetic of a forged piece. Now with that cut off, I can take it over to the 2x72 grinder and grind in the curved sections and really clean this little thumb screw up, which I think came out really nice. Wanted to open up the legs of the vise before I put the screw on, so I just use my drift again to kind of open that up, let it cool down a little bit, and then I can go ahead and install my thumb screw. Now I can go ahead and continue to tune it by using the drift and the forge to kind of heat up the center, but essentially this is done. There's enough spring tension in those legs because of the high carbon nature of this railroad spike to actually open and close really well. And then all I have to do is clean it up on the belt grinder and then go ahead and hit it on the wire wheel to get all the forge scale off. This was a really fun and challenging project and I love vices and tools of all kinds, so to make my own vice was a really rewarding little process. Um, I'm excited to have this thing. It's going to be great for doing kind of like fine, detailed work, and it's just such a cool-looking piece in my opinion. The last thing was to add my maker's mark, which is a little Z on the jaws, and then you can see it here grabbing a little titanium ring that I made a while back. This is actually one of the versions of my wedding band that I made myself, but essentially this is what you're gonna use a vise like this for, holding nice small pieces. And I'm gonna probably make a little leather guard that can fit in there to hold really delicate things. But overall, this thing is really cool. Um, I think it looks awesome, it's fun to use, and it's definitely a cool testament to what you can make out of a regular old railroad spike. So thanks for watching. Check me out right here on Instagram if you wanna see more of what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And be sure to subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this and more videos in the shop. Thanks.